And when we first had the idea, I think was, I have emails, I, I joke with Danny, that I have emails from like 2006, 2007, kind of, you know, talking about, oh, we'll do this Hanson's West program, or maybe we'll do, I don't know, just some track team in Seattle or whatever. And, and what you realize is events or any other kind of sponsorship, sometimes your company's not ready for it. Maybe the idea's there, but maybe you're not even ready for it or the resources aren't there. But when we started sponsoring the Hansons, it was a really big deal, and it took years for people to really realize, wow, that was, you know, Brian Sell becomes an Olympian, and then they think, well, what's next? And then Desi starts running the way she does, and, and then now they have this resurgence of this really young group. The success of that team over years opened up minds, not only in our sports marketing department, but inside Brooks, that while wow, this is really valuable, the only thing that could be more valuable or as valuable would be if it was right here every single day with us in Seattle. We already thought we had a good couple people here to start it with, and we thought, well, could we do a version of this with a little bit more track focus, a little bit more middle distance focus, and not be competing with what we already have, but kind of complementing it. And internally, I really believe the selling point was, how would you guys feel if our athletes were just here every day? Like, you could go out to the track, and if you had a new spike or a new shoe you wanted them to try, just walk out to the track, and because they're, they're here. So that's kind of the origination of the idea. It was it was a while ago, but January was kind of when we finally got the uh, green light to put it in action. I guess when you're talking about starting a group, you're, you're thinking of the coach almost first. I had taken a road trip that summer with Danny, Danny Mackey. As the road trip kind of went on, Katie was in Europe, and you know, you're in a car for 12 hours a day. You hear basically an hour long phone call every single day. I realized not only was Danny really patient as a coach, but all the attributes that I had seen in coaches who I thought were very successful, he had all those attributes. I knew for a long time like what I wanted to do. It was just a matter of getting opportunity and, and honestly I'd kind of given up hope. I had all these really cool jobs and I was always frustrated with them. Mostly it's because my, my passion to do this wasn't getting fulfilled as, enough, as much as I would want it to be. So at that time when he asked me, like, yeah, I'll take that dream job. The way we picked the athletes has been very you know, how do they fit our culture, you know, in our building? Would, could they could just walk around and talk to people in our building and they just fit the kind of Brooks Run Happy vibe? Would they fit in great with a team? Would they bounce well off each other? Would they support each other in good and bad workouts? Are they staying at the track later to watch their friends run? Like those types of personalities are the people we want on the team. The spice plate is aggressive enough for 1500 where I feel like it keeps me up on my toes. Obviously fast is important but personality goes a long way, and I feel really good about the people we have on our team. I'm Deborah Mayer, and I graduated from UC Berkeley, Cal. I am a two-time NCAA runner-up. My name is Katie Mackey. I graduated from the University of Washington, where I was an eight-time All-American. Since then, I've been a three-time U.S. 1500 meter finalist. I'm Casimir Loxham, NCAA runner-up, 145, 800 runner, and was World Junior Silver Medalist in 2010. I'm Riley Masters, I graduated from the University of Oklahoma, run 356 in the mile, six-time All-American, the newest member of the Brooks Beast. I mean, I killed that. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to watch this, you know, to listen to Jesse say he had a goal of starting a group and then it becoming a reality and to see it kind of materialize uh, today on the run was just was overwhelming and you know, I couldn't believe it. You know, I just like, kind of took a step back at one point. I was like, I'd finished my run. I was kind of by myself. I like, looked around. And I was like, oh my God, like, I'm part of this group. I'm a professional runner. It was, it was almost, it was surreal. Every time we get to the next level, I want to be like three levels higher. So I get really excited because a lot of the people we said we wanted to be in Seattle are in Seattle. When someone asks me, are you an underdog? It's like, why would you ask me? Like, yes. We've been around for a while, but in uh, this kind of arena, we're new. And so a new person in the arena is always gonna be an underdog. When an underdog starts doing really well, people can't help but get behind it. And I hope that's kind of how this group is. I think we can't be underdog for too long with the type of people we have here. 
fact, I really have been blown away by how quickly it has gained momentum and just the caliber of girls who've joined right away. And the fact that they've just really put a lot of money and time and effort into building this group, I think that's just going to keep on getting better. And I think a year from now that won't even be a question, like is this group legit?